There's a bunch of games of which I wanted to talk about, either in reviews or in classic videos, but in but every game was either so widely known that my points were old news at that point, or they were old as fuck, like Undertale for example. So when I tried Whistle Legend about a week ago, I just had to take my chance, because A, it's a month old, and B, it's surprisingly not very known. It's a very fun and little game, which normally would be covered by like bigger YouTubers like Jack Subscribe, but somehow it's not really been talked about yet, and I, I kind of think that's a shame. The game in question is called Wizard of Legend, and this is like dungeon crawler slash roguelike type game. This means that your character will go through a dungeon multiple times, and for each time you die in it, you will be able to maybe unlock a new item, or you will just understand the enemies better, making the game slightly easier for each time you go through it. It's kind of the type of where you just sit down, you play the game, you don't save, you just take a few rounds and then you leave. Almost like an arcade. Other games like this is Binding of Isaac and Enter the Gungeon, where Binding of Isaac has a much more depressing tone, and Enter the Gungeon has a very funny, uh, light-lighted slash serious zone about people trying to delete their past uh, and, has, and having a more broader story to it. Wizard Legend is centered around, uh, as you can probably guess, mages, magic, wizards, and all that. It's throughout like fantasy genre. You, are as one of many mages, go on to challenge the Chaos Trials, an area where the magic console will challenge a bunch of mages to, to a fight, and whoever does the best will gain the title of Wizard of Legend. Between these three main boss fights are two stages. And for each stage, there are one merchant uh, who sells relics or items, and one uh, arcana forge machines which makes spells, as well as a random NPC doing different things. An example of one of these strange NPCs is a pinata, where if you do enough damage within a certain amount of time, you will get a free spell. You go through the you go through the dungeon, getting some gold and getting these items and spells uh, to then power up before the fights. It's all about just trying to keep your health up, get as many resources as you can, and just hope the luck is with you. Because the um, thing about this game is that a bunch of these runs are luck based. This is a ro this is a dungeon crawler, so everything is randomized. Uh, the everything but the boss rooms and the very basic rooms which you need. So everything else you see is just going to be completely randomized. The first thing which I want to talk about of this game is like the game style. As uh, you can probably see, this game uses pixel graphics. Uh, this is completely up to the person, and it's not something I can really judge. But I will say that the animations for everything is buttery smooth. Everything is animated in a way which makes sense, from the dirt falling from boulders to how your character shoots fire, uh, to uh, how reticles and uh, warning signs, like where this is where the enemy is going to attack, all make sense in a certain amount of way. It's a bunch of good sound clues, as well as the animations just... They're just really butter smooth, to be honest. It's not as insane level as Cuphead, for example, where it's like 60 frames hand animated. But it's also its own compared to other roguelikes. Uh, I would argue that it's pretty much as good as Enter the Gungeon coming from to its animations. And it definitely beats the Divining with Isaac when it comes down to animations. The game has a certain charm, which I personally really enjoy. I don't know how to describe it, but the world feels fun and lighthearted, and the dungeon feels serious and tense, like it's a test of courage. All the characters seem lighthearted and happy, like this world is filled with light and happy people and townsmen, like any other fantasy uh, ordeal. But then when you enter the dungeon, it feels like the darkness surrounds you, and this is truly the chaos trance, which I really enjoy how like it can just snap from the position to position. It just feels natural, and it also just is quite enjoyable in the end. Pretty much like Legend of Zelda, if you understand me. It's in Hollyhard in, in the start, but once you like enter the real game and get into the meat of it, it gets pretty serious to some extent. And due to this, the very cliche like world building uh, it does not feel as stale as it really should be. Uh, which does lead me to the story, which to be honest, it's it's flat out just boring. There's not really any explanation of why, why you're doing this thing. In Enter the Gungeon, uh, you fight because you want to delete your past, and then the, then the Binding of Isaac, uh, you have a bigger story in the background, which makes sense. This game, you just you just go in and begin shooting 
guys because you can. It doesn't really make sense. It's uh, you just suddenly at a museum get transported to this other world and you're just oh now I'm gonna have to fight whatever. Which is a huge negative for the game really. I would really like to see a bigger story with other like with better lore in it in, in general because it just. The world just doesn't feel lived in. It feels kind of fake. Like, if this was just a virtual reality world where this man got teleported once and he has to do this thing because he got tossed to do it by some weird professor. It doesn't really feel like it's a cool ass world with a bunch of townsfolk and mages fighting around and such. It just feels kind of flat. Other thing about the wife is they're horrible jokes. Like, I hope your journey so far hasn't been terrible. And now, how's the gameplay, you're probably wondering. Well, how do I set this? It's fucking fun. The best part of the game, in like, ever, is just, is just how your character is, controls, and how he uses spells. The mix between all of the different spells you can use, and the different combos which you can initiate, are so fun to tool around with, and just find a combo which you really enjoy. Uh, when it comes to when it comes down to the controls, I would say that the controls are decent at the PC. You can just change the controls if you want to as well, so it doesn't really matter. But on the Switch version, I will admit that. But on the Switch version, I will admit that the controls are not that great. You can't even aim properly in the Switch version, which is uh, just why. <laughs> the gameplay, however, is really fun and challenging. You have multiple spells you can use, which all have their own cooldown. You, you can combine them into powerful combos, and mastering a spell's use to the fullest is really fun. Being able to understand every single aspect of a spell allows you to do so many different things with it and really use it to its fullest potential. Uh, so you really do feel like a master mage going through this dungeon. The thing which makes the game really challenging is that you have to watch over the enemies, the stage, your cooldowns, your character, the areas around you, projectiles, all these other things. There's so many things you have to watch out for all the time and manage. So it's a really like a multitasking uh, chat. So it really challenges you on being able to multitask different things and to really just deal with the situation quickly. Whenever you get into a room, there are so many different enemies you have to kill and you have to prioritize one before the other. Which makes the gun quite fun and challenging at the same time as you really feel like you have to strategize while you're fighting as a sort of like, it feels... So it actually feels like a battle and not one of those turn-based RPGs where you just have to say, I right, do this and then see what the other dude ha does afterwards. You do it at the same time, making the game way more enjoy enjoyable. When it comes down to the variety, I would say it's pretty good. Um, the enemies base design are pretty similar, but there are many enough to make each enemy feel a little refreshing to take on. When it comes down to variety, I would say the game is pretty decent. It has a lot. Uh, nah. When it comes to variety, I would say it's pretty decent. It does have a lot of variety, different to especially to its. The overall variety is pretty good, but then variety isn't that decent. The variety in the game is pretty good, to be honest. Yes, the enemies. Oh, okay. The variety and the VR, the variety of the game. The game's variety is pretty good. With like uh, randomized dungeons, not all of them do feel the same. And though I will admit, some of them do get boring after a while, since they not really that great, like greatly generated. Um, the spells are there are so many spells and so many items which you can combine into powerful combos. It's really fun just toying around with them. I play 9 hours and I barely unlocked any of them. The enemies are the best decent. Uh, the base designs uh, of all enemies are pretty similar. And you do have like different type of elemental types to them. Like you have fireball archers, poison bow archers and all that. And they all do have their own textures and little abilities. Which do make them fresh. But don't really make them that new or exciting. Like in Enter the Gungeon where... Every enemy has their own little design to it, and own little thing to it, which just makes them really easy to recognize. And this game is just more around... In this game, two of the enemies can look completely the, the same, but has still have the different movesets, which can make it pretty annoying at times. A thing which makes it way more fun and challenging is that after defeating a boss, the same enemies you just fought might have a different moveset. They might have different abilities and all that. 
which really makes you keep on your toes. Like, you just thought you mastered uh, the way of killing a bunch of these enemies, and then you throw right into the dungeon, and then they have completely different movesets, which you never see, and so you have to strategize completely anew and go all on the guard again. Which really, it doesn't really give you time to breathe, but that's good, because you don't really get to just feel bored as you find these enemies. You're really gonna have to focus on them. And this is way better than just giving the enemies more damage and health. <coughs> Dark Session, new game plus. <coughs> I do have some complaints. First of all, get rid of all those fucking holes. Alright, so there's a dash ability which helps you to move around, like uh, in Enter the Gungeon. This one does not allow you to become invincible for a few seconds. It just It's just there to make you faster and have a better way of movement. But the problem with the game is that they also have holes and acrobatics uh, levels where you have to be very precise with your dashing. The problem is, is that the holes are so big that you can barely jump over them even if you hug the holes. So uh, whenever you're just naturally trying to jump before the hole comes, because that's what you mind telling you, you first have to go all the way up to the hole, see your character stop before the hole, then dash, and then you will fully safely get over the hole and it's really annoying when you're fighting and trying to move around Merced just takes some unnecessary damage sorry about that now the game is really fun for what I've seen and it really has these strong errors but I will admit that it has some flaws which makes the game far from perfect as a role like uh, it does what it needs to and it offers it in a really cheap and fun packet as a whole game, without thinking about the genre, it's still awesome, but it doesn't do anything wild nor interesting. The gameplay, art style, controls, and variety is solid as hell, but it just fails at the story, and the world building to a certain extent. In all, I would recommend you to buy this. It's cheap, fun, and a good time in general. Something which I feel like a bunch of games have lost focus on. 6.9 out of 10, IGN.